Ah, look at you, sir. How would you like to receive Sunder to the forehead? What's up guys, my name is ESO and welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're going to be reviewing Sunder and Wraithguard, a very interesting reference to the lore of the Dwemer people. It was actually crafted by the Dwemer tonal architect, Lord Kagrenak. Sunder and Wraithguard represent two of the three tools created to tap into the heart of Lorcan. Imbued with ancient magic, the weapons are said to empower not only their wielder, but each other. Now, this weapon was actually available in Morrowind as well as some of you true fans will remember. But in this video, we're going to do the quest to obtain the weapon and also actually review the weapon itself. And I'll let you know if it's worth its money and if it's actually any good to use in game. But we can see a few pictures here of it as well as the dungeon itself where we need to go to obtain it, I assume. So let's just go ahead and buy this for five dollars. Yes. Take my soul, Bethesda. Download it so we can actually review it. And by the way, guys, I've linked the playlist down below in the description if you're looking for reviews and guides on the other Creation Club content and also where I got this unique mask as well, which is actually a pretty decent thing to grab if you're a warrior. But Legends of Lost. Now, rumors say an old refuge trunk full of letters has been uncovered in Windhelm. I should see if I can find a copy of those letters and more information on the cargo they were carrying because I am a nosy fecker. Find the caravan's letter in Windhelm. Okay, let's go ahead and fast travel to Windhelm. Oh, the game crashed. Great. Hi, mister. Would you like to buy some... Hi, mister. Would you like to buy some flowers? No, yes. peasant. Out of my way. Oh, I... Okay, sorry. How dare you interrupt me like that. I was in the middle of making a video. Now, which way to the docks? Ah, no, it's not the docks. It's the General Traders. New Ginnis Corner Club. Okay, let's head on inside. Usually the game, like, never really gives you a reason to go to this shop. Let me know if you want anything. I think I got a clean mug around here somewhere. Ah, are these the letters? There's just some plates here. Oh, I see. It must be under the table. What kind of a hovel are you running here? This place is completely wrecked. It's got holes in the floor everywhere. You should really do something about that. Apparently, some Nord women were murdered. Not sure why I should care. Why is the quest marker here? Like, find the caravan's letters in Windhelm. I'm proud of what we've managed to accomplish. Oh, are they underneath? Oh, it's hidden underneath. I literally couldn't see that at all. Read Lost Caravan's guard note. We crossed into Skyrim under the cover of Ashfall. As far as anyone knows, we're shipping refugees. Just one in a long line of vagrant caravans escaping from the wrath of the Red Mountain. Normally a story like that would be enough to get us through. Now I've been a caravan guard for some time, and I've seen some pretty extensive security measures. Locks, chains, the works. One client even had a conjurer summon a Daedra to guide his wagon. But even compared to that, this seems excessive. For one, everything has a code name. The cargo, the guards, even the horses. As for the caravans, to keep it familiar, we've each been given a name from one of the great houses. Of course, the guards didn't like that part. One of the new bloods said he'd rather bend the knee to Guar than the name of the house dress. Captain's Inidos brought him in line with the point of his blade. And the rest of us follow. You'd think the Red Year would unite us. But it seems that there are old scars that haven't healed and old scores that haven't been settled. But at the end of the day, none of that matters. The job, the job. Like the captain said, at least they didn't name us after the boots. We've also got several decoy caravans heading out through all the way to some undisclosed location in Hammerfell. But since that's not enough, each caravan will meet up at present checkpoints and swap their items out. That means different decoys traveling different paths every step of the way. With the refugee guard, they say we should blend right in. And on the off chance we don't, we've got runners set to flee to the next village. Hidden compartments, anything you can think of. Still, if you ask me, all of this sounds like a waste of time. I'm no scholar, but these two bits of cargo don't look like anything special. Just a fancy way to bash some poor Flesh's skull in. With all the chaos bleeding out to Valenfell, we've made it to Windhelm. 
without so much of a paper cut. Come morning, we're heading out to the west along the river to the Nightingale Inn. If all goes well, we'll reach the mountain pass by midday. Still, we'd get there sooner if not for all the stops. Okay. That's very interesting. Things so, they set out to the west. To Come, Lydia, we must go and find them. Maybe we can even catch up with them. Or maybe we find out that their caravan did indeed get ambushed. So here they are. Follow the caravan's trail. They didn't get very far, did they? Let's go to the Forsaken Cave. Oh, Jesus Christ, Lydia, there's a bloody bear running out. Lydia, look out! Jesus Christ, Lydia. Get wrecked, silly snow bear. Look at all the wildlife of Skyrim has joined in this battle. Get wrecked, woof. Lydia, help me. Save me, Lydia. Good girl. She's absolutely wrecked all the ice wolves. By the way, guys, if you want this mount, check out my video linked in the description. It's also one of the Creation Club mods that adds a whole dungeon to the game. Anyway, I was following the road here before we got attacked. And just here is the old caravan. Let's whip out a torch, if I can just get off my horse. I've been playing too much to Red Dead Redemption, so whenever I try and get off my horse, I press Y, and then it does that really weird neighing animation. Right, I got my torch out, here we are. Oh, there's even some kind of Dwemer cargo here. A few Dwemer spiders, in fact. The old caravan chest with another note. It happened sometime after we crossed deeper into the mountains, but I swear I could hear singing. Tunnels. Very quiet, but singing nonetheless. No one else believes me, but I'd bet my bottom drake that I had something to do with the Dwemer machines attacking us last night. I've never heard of these things leaving their ruins, let alone roaming the countryside after the travellers. It's almost as if they were drawn to the music. Tonight we're handing the cargo over to Sadras Caravan, and I say good riddance, but the captain says we're going to eventually circle back to Whiterun, which means we could see the cargo again. If that happens, I'm getting off this caravan. I don't care about the gold, I haven't slept for days and I feel like I'm losing my mind. Even now, I can hear that awful singing in my head. I just want it to stop. So if we look on the map again, the caravan got slightly further. Find the second caravan located over here. So I'm going to go to the farm here, and then we'll fast travel over there on our horse. Now, I'm actually quite interested because, obviously, Sunder was a Dwemer artifact. And clearly the Dwemer are trying to reclaim it, but that just seems crazy to me. It must have been drawn to the sounds it was making. Right, let me get on my Dwemer steed. And then we will ride to the next caravan, which I guess, you know, we're going to miss it again. I assume it's going to be destroyed off the path here, especially if some more Dwemer have gotten to it before I get there. Yeah, I can see it just here. And it's abandoned and indeed destroyed. Can't see any Dwemer right now, though. Let's have a closer inspection here. Some logs from a damaged cart. Oh my god, the skeletons. How long have they been dead for? And we do have some more Dwemer. I can search the skeleton though, because it's got the CD guard's note on it. Telvani handed the cargo off to us at the checkpoint. They seemed a bit on edge, but they aren't sharing details exactly. Just that they were attacked by Dwemer machines. Bunch of useless fetchers. We also had a surprise visit from the Halan caravan. The whole crew was an odd bunch. More scholars and farmers than warriors, I'd say. But a few were just my type. I tried to chat it up with a fetching raven-haired girl, but she kept those surly red eyes fixed on the cargo as it changed hands. In any case, the main package is secured, but there's fear it was damaged during the transport. Oddly, the Halal captain didn't seem too concerned about it, he and the boss talk for a bit by themselves. I tried my luck with the raven-haired tart once and she told me her name was Valine. She asked whether the Inodus would be at the next checkpoint. I told her no, but the truth is, I didn't even I don't know why she cared anyway. Their cargo is a decoy. The real package is going to Indoril at the next stop. 
Once that's delivered, I'm hearing we might stop for a day or two in Whiterun to get out, to get our bearings. The captain of the Indoril caravan is a Nord, and he mentioned heading over to the Hall of the Dead to pay his respects. That's fine. I'll be paying mine at the tavern. <laughs> Hopefully I'll get a chance to buy a sweet little Valine a drink. Sorry for butchering these names, guys. So now we've got to head over to the next location, which is here in Whiterun. Maybe we'll find another note at the Hall of the Dead or in the tavern from one of these people. I kind of actually like chasing these notes explaining how they were trying to pull these Daedric artifacts from Morrowind. I like how we started the video here and now we're back. But um, it's quite an interesting journey to be honest and I kind of like the lore friendly way they've inserted it into the game. I always appreciate it when the mod author does extra effort making a well-rounded quest even if it does require a bit of reading in notes. Because, you know, dungeons are just killing lots of enemies in a long corridor, so I think the notes actually take a bit of effort to write and uh, a bit of an imagination there, and effort's gone into it, which I appreciate. So here we- oh god, Jesus Christ, my fram. <laughs> Your soul is mine. <laughs> Any more skeletons want some? Caravan captain's note. Okay, I can't read it yet. We met with the Sadras and picked up the cargo. At least their captain seemed in better spirits, but the others looked exhausted. To make matters worse, the air was flush with news about the caravan who didn't make it, seized by dwarven automatrons on the road to Whiterun. My worry is that such fears will find their way into the minds of my men, especially when the details of their stories seem to corroborate. It only serves to throw more kindling on the flame. Hopefully the other captains have a plan. We've had a few deserters already and we'll need every available body if these attacks continue. It will be difficult to convince the men to leave the safety of the tavern for the terrors of the unknown. Even without this dwarven nonsense, the road ahead will only be more perilous given, given the copious bandits, wolves and other dangerous things on the road. Captain Inodus has asked us to take a detour with the Dress Caravan to Falkreath. Staying off the main road might provide us some cover. I want to know what happened to this girl though. Did he get the girl or not? I guess we will never find out, guys. I'm sorry to say that. I'm actually interested though because it said that the caravan's being attacked by Dwemer even if they weren't carrying the artifact. So that makes me think, was this actually planned and orchestrated by somebody? But anyway, the caravan was making its way over here to Falkreath. So let's head over to Peakshay Tower and go and discover what happened to it. Let's have a look at this caravan here and see what we can find. Another dead body and another old caravan chest. We didn't loot the last one, but I guess it just has random loot inside it. The note it's- Oh! The attunement crystal! No way, it's so important. We need this. And oh, the letter! Haha, <laughs> I wonder what she says. It's from that girl that the other orc was uh, flirting with. Inodos, the reports are right. Wraithguard and Sunder are singing, sending a signal out to anyone that might be listening. I don't know how, but I think I know why. The tools were only meant to be used on Numidian. It makes sense that they would never be allowed to leave Morrowind. To ensure this, Kogrenak must have put a failsafe system on it. If the tools were ever stolen, drones would be activated across Tamriel to recover them. The drones would store the items in a vault until the tonal architect could fetch them. Ah, okay. Unfortunately, as I suspected the information was enough for some of the captains to betray us and change course. They no longer care about the artifacts or the job. They consider the cargo to be a death trap and are taking measures to unload it. Your caravan might think they were carrying the tools. Sadras and the Halan swapped them before we ever got to Whiterun and intentionally gave them up to the retrieval drones. Fortunately, I managed to track the drones back to the vault near Whiterun, what the locals called the Sightless Pit. I've also discovered that the vault can be opened with an attunement crystal, which I've sent along with this letter. As I'm no warrior, I dare not venture inside without you. Hopefully this message reaches your party in time, for I know we are of like mind. As a scholar, I wanted to see the artifacts delivered to my master, and you have always been someone who does not shrink from his duty. I have faith that you and your crew can return north and repair this mistake. Balin. Okay, great. Sadly, it didn't mention the uh, little flirtation they had. But we can fast travel to the Dwemer Cavern. 
Oh, the sightless pit. Oh, this is a cool location. I did a video on it ages ago. But um, clearly the mod has added a new dungeon area within the pit where we can grab the tonal artifact. So here we are at the sightless pit and I can see a troll trolling me in the distance. Get Rex up! Oh, he's a, a frosty troll. Don't worry, bro. Headshot. Oh, yes, get Rex. Okay, so as you can see, the Sea of Ghosts goes out to the middle of nowhere. There's actually going to be a mod coming uh, in the coming year, I think, called Rescreer, which is out in the middle of Sea of Ghosts, where the giants actually hail from. So I'm looking forward to playing that mod. That's a fan-made mod, by the way, so we won't need to pay for that one. But you can see Winterhold just there. That's another mod that extends the city, gives it walls and makes it much more defensible, which is more accurate to the law. Um, obviously, uh, the Mages Guild is also over there as well. But hey, let's... Wait, is that... Is that a... What is that? Is that a wolf? No, it's running away. It's running away. <laughs> There's no chance I can hit it. Oh, well. Let's head on inside the sightless pit. Now, the cool thing about this location, guys, is that you basically jump into the pit, which is indeed sightless because you cannot see the bottom of it. And this is the only way in. You don't know where the way out is. So let's go. So here we are. We've landed at the bottom of this pool here in the sightless pit. I don't know what's going on with my snow textures there. That's a little bit weird. Let's head on deeper into the tunnels. Now, you did notice outside. What is that sound? That there was some Falmer. But it seems like somebody has come here. There's a skill book here, which I'm, I'll show you. I can't remember what it is. Pickpockets. Increase to level 25. Nice. You can also pick it up because it's worth 60 gold. But clearly some adventurers actually came and tried to explore this ruin. Clearly they probably got killed in their sleep or at least these guys got ambushed while mining bandits what were they expecting to find here the fools nothing of interest anyway let's head deeper into the caverns here guys very creepy i like this area because it's kind of like you constantly fall down you can't get back up you can only go deeper into the ruin there's like no real way out kind of reminds me of that scene in lord of the rings when uh who is it sam or mary drops the um not sam mary or pippin drops the the um well into he drops the buckets into the well it makes a ton of noise and then suddenly the camera pans down this whole area and you can just hear the drumming of these orcs getting louder and louder. It's interesting that it will be taken back to the, the Dwemer cave where the Falmer are. If you guys didn't know the lore, the Falmer used to be uh, snow elves and they were tricked by the Dwemer with nowhere else to go, fleeing from the war, to take refuge with the Dwemer at the cost of eating the mushrooms down here which turn them blind. So now the what's left of the snow elves have become the Falmer and they now live in these ruins forevermore. Interestingly, they potentially could have even outlived. What the hell are you doing, bro? Oh, get Rex, son. <laughs> He's like, uh, what happened? Get wrecked, mate. What? How is that kill cam? It's destroyed. <laughs> there you go. That's a proper kill cam. <laughs> that cartwheel, though. So, you know, you can't really tell that they're even elves anymore, but apart from the long ears, it's almost become creatures like Gollum from Lord of the Rings, you know. And they've just completely changed into these creatures that don't even need sight to be able to sense you and attack you, because their senses are just tuned to being, you know, living in the darkness. So here we have it. We've gone through the cave and we've made our way to what looks like a Dwemer ruin. There is a night prowler here. I want to take him out because he's very powerful. Oh, his pet skeevers coming for me. Get wrecked, son. Oh, there's another one. Oh, it's just a spider. Destroyed. A old Dwemer centurion would have once protected this gate, but was obviously taken out by the Falmer. Staff of lightning bolts. Don't need it. You can sell it if you want. The Temple of Zrab. 
Let's have a look, guys. It's clearly some kind of Dwemer stronghold. And I can see Bowmer's pets. Very annoying to take out. So is this Night Prowler, actually. And it's very tanky. I made a video already on where to get the full Falmer armor, both the light armor and the heavy armor sets. Um, that's in the original base game, by the way, if you guys are interested. Once again, we travel back into the caves here. Oh, we heard something. Get wrecked. Oh boy, Lydia. Attack, Lydia, attack! What are you waiting for? Oh, that was a strong-ass chain lightning spell. Luckily, Lydia doesn't give a crap about it. Go on, Lydia. I'll let you take him out. Oh, yes. Get wrecked. You take too long. Okay, let's head onwards and upwards. Here we have what appears to be an area like Blackreach. Just a massive cavern. Which the Dwemer have constructed... Their architecture there. Let's take out these enemies here. Get wrecked, sir. Now, so far, this dungeon is exactly like it is in the vanilla game, so I've not seen anything new yet. Boom! Oh, the nipple shot. The nipple shot. What the? <laughs> Why do they keep doing that? It's like they just, you know, they get hit by the arrow and suddenly they're like, oh, yeah. I should do something epic before I die. This is my moment. This is the time I will appear on ESO's YouTube channel. Better do a, a cartwheel just in case. Get Rex on. That was a less epic cartwheel there. I want the Falmer arrows because we're kind of running low on arrows, guys. Okay, so heading upwards still. There is a, a small Falmer chest here. Let's head over here then. Up this spiral stair. It's so dark. Ha! Ah! Such a creepy wall. These guys have very uh, hard armor, so sneak attacks are really what we need to get rid of them. I can hear another creepy crawly in the background there. Oh, a bow of freezing. That's nice. Don't need it, though. Oh! I almost rolled right into him. Look at that face. I'm going to shoot an arrow at his... Oh, what? This Falmer has crazy dodging skills, guys. Let's try and deceive him to go and search this area. There we go. Now we'll take him out as he runs over. Oh, really? You've got crazy dodge skills, that? Stop it. Get wrecked, son. Alright, we're reaching the end of the dungeon, guys. It's not much further. But this, in itself, seems to be some kind of strange Dwemer. Oh, there's a glass bow. Helmet of archery. Nice. Supposed to do 25% more damage. Lots of nice charred items in there. I don't know, it's kind of like, it's almost like a throne room, but with no throne, just a boss chest. Okay, let's head down into the depths. Into the abandoned cave, apparently. I think this is the way out, so this is like the exit to this dungeon. But you cannot otherwise enter this way. You can only enter by dropping into the pit. So here we are. Is this the final... Oh, I can hear something. Ah, this is where we activate the Dwarf Pedestal, which is a new part of the dungeon. Look at that. That looks insane. Oh, Lydia. I didn't realize you were killing someone there. Activate. Oh, so now I can open the door, I guess. The Sightless Vault. So this area is completely new.
Quema are quite strange. I don't really understand why, but they do usually have like water running alongside the pathways. And I think it has something to do with like the steam power of how they work. This is some kind of gate here that looks pretty dangerous. Find a way to open the vault gate. Okay. So this is the gate itself, which requires a key. And I can see the weapon and armor secretly hidden there in the middle. Well, it's not really a secret. We can see it now, but I assume it has something to do with these valves and changing the pressure gauges. Maybe this one. Oh, okay, I see. So currently the steam's coming out of this vent. So I guess we need to redirect the steam to open the, the gates. So now it's coming out of here, which we don't want. So it's not connected to anything. Ah, now it's coming out of this one. So now if we turn this one. Ah, okay, the steam's coming out of here. And now it's coming out of here. Ah, okay, so we've restored the right-hand side valve system. So you literally just keep activating the levers until you fix the, the valve system. It was relatively simple. But I actually think that's really cool, because usually the quest, you know, wouldn't have such an elaborate quest to go with it, which I'm actually, like, really appreciate that, because usually they don't put that much effort into it. You usually just find the weapon on a dead body or something that's a bit cheap. This one has had a lot of effort put into it, so I think that's great news. <coughs> so we're just going to go along and carry on turning this until it's coming out of the right line. And then it goes on to this one, so we turn this one again. And again. And this one. And again. There we go. So we found a way to open the gate. So I guess I can now access it. Not this gate. Oh, okay, one second. I can activate this lever now. And now... Oh. Oh, Jesus Christ, the messenger. Oh, my God, Lydia. Where are you? The bloody hell is that? I don't want any messengers from you, mate. Right, okay, let's... Let's upgrade our weaponry. Let's have a potion of resist shock and a filter of true shock. So we do extra damage there. And then we want to pepper him with arrows. Oh my god. He's literally going to one hit kill Lydia, isn't he? How is Lydia still alive? If she dies, I'm going to have to spend my time running away. She's actually doing a lot of damage with that sword. Holy crap, Lydia. I guarantee this thing will one hit kill me. I love the retexture on it though, like the black and gold looks absolutely insane. Lydia's doing such a good job of tanking it though. And she's healed up as well. Oh yes, Lydia. I still have all my limbs, she says. <laughs> oh, okay, great. That was a sick boss fight. And there's a boss chest at the back here. Grab that before we get the real treasure. Glass battle axe of shocks and just a normal glass battle axe. <coughs> the normal one alone is worth 500 gold. So here we have it. We unlocked the Wraith Garden Sunder. Activate. Completed. Legends. Loss. Sunder and Wraith Guard added. Okay, we've got our unique weapons, guys. Let's check this out then. So, firstly, we have Sunder. Now this does 5 points of frost and fire and shock damage each at the same time, so it's kind of like chaos damage. Now I don't know if this weapon is leveled, but it does do 28 damage. It also does 15 points of damage to stamina and magicka. So it's kind of like, it looks good, like the texture works quite nice. It's definitely like, you know, based off the one on Morrowind. Quite basic looking, really. It's just a hammer. And then we have, then we have Wraithguard. Resist shock, fire, frost, magic damage, disease, and poison by 10%. Empowers keening and sunder when equipped. So that means if I equip this, sunder will do even more damage. 
Look at that though, they look really cool. I love that. Really nice. Now these actually give me 21 armor, which is quite a lot. So apparently it empowers Keening. So Keening here does a damage of 17 now and it absorbs 10 points of health, magicka and stamina. So this weapon, by the way, is, a is available in the original game. And I'll leave a guide in the description on how to get it. It also has a lot of lore to do with this quest mod. So if you want like more lore and more backstory on it, definitely check that video out anyway. So if I equip that, and also Sunder as well, <laughs> we can see here, look how awesome that is. So there you have it, that's Sunder right there. Looks insane. And here we have Wraithguard and Keening there as well. Very well done mod. I, I absolutely love the texture work, and it fits really well. And I've also got the Dwemer helmet. And ironically, I'm wearing Falmer armor with this, which is probably the most ironic thing I could be wearing with it. But if you guys look, it does 32 damage. But if I unequip Wraithguard, it only does 28. So it actually adds like another 10 damage on. Which is really impressive, actually. That's a lot more damage. So let's go and try these bad boys out. And to give you guys an idea, Sunder does 32 damage. And a Daedric Dagger does 23 damage there. So it's actually ridiculous ridiculously powerful for a one-handed weapon especially when you've got the gauntlets on with that extra 10 damage so let's go out and give it a go obviously this is going to increase my sneak attack damage so i can one hit people one hit kill people with a sneak attack and a dagger ah look at you sir how would you like to receive sunder to the forehead one-handed is going to increase to level 35 man this is just going to be ridiculous. Let's go. Oh, there's a dragon there. You better land, dragon. Aha! Well, he does a lot more damage with <laughs> than I do to him. Get down from your perch, dragon. Rawr. Now the damage isn't going to be insane on this build. But if you have a good, even one-handed tank character, like I've got a build guide for in the description, it's going to be insanely powerful. But right now, just the amount of enchantments that are going on is crazy. So there you have it, guys. I hope you... in. Oh, he's almost killed me there. Let me get a potion. One more hit and he's a dead boy. There we go. The glacial dragon has been defeated. Oh, damn it. So is this horse. Sadly, we could not save the horse, guys. But there you have it. The complete review and playthrough of this mod. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Personally, I thought it was really good, this mod, and I think it's worth $5 if you plan to actually make use of all the enchantments and effects on these weapons, and you especially want, like, a Dwemer-themed build. If you want a Dwemer-themed build, by the way, I've got a guide linked in the description on how to make one that really does fit the character of this weapon as well. But thanks very much for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, I've got a whole playlist of other mods and secret weapons and guides in Skyrim if you guys want to check that out. They're all linked down below in the description. But thank you very much for watching me, ESO, and I will see you guys in the next video. Goodbye, and have a fantastic day.